I said in the uh, invitation to today's studio visit is I've been working on ideas for mixed media for a couple of reasons. One, I just like doing it. And two, um, Central Mass uh, Pastel Societies having another one of their shows where it is pastel with mixed media. And most pastel shows, the top surface has to be 80% in order to be submitted to a pastel uh, show. Of course, for you know other venues, there's I, I doubt there's those restrictions on it. So that's specific to um, pastel exhibitions that you're being juried into, and sometimes for member shows. So this one's really fun because uh, a lot of the ones that I do with mixed media, I never put in any of the the pastel shows. Uh, you know, depending on how much of the top surface is pastel or not. So I've been, I, I went uh, really not totally crazy, but slightly nutty buying origami paper. I had so much fun when I did, um, I did one painting that really turned, anytime you try something new, just remember that, um, you know, I've done several of them. One of them I really liked. The other three were, I think they were okay. They're fine hanging around here, but they're never going to wind up anywhere. You know, they have parts of them that work and parts don't. So I feel like, you know, that little bit of practice with, uh, you know, fooling around and then doing a couple of, uh, you know, real official paintings. <laughs> um, you know, I wanted to get back in and try it again. So just to give you a little background on it, um, as you can see on the screen, this is the, the photograph. I've adapted the photograph. It's not exactly like the photograph. I did my uh, value study. From my value study, I did a no tan. And then the no tan really acted as um, my template for uh, cutting out the shapes. And I used um, this paper right here, which some of you have seen before. Uh, this Dorlar, and what's really nice about it is uh, it's got a very high clarity, so you can see through it really well. It's much thicker than tissue paper, so it doesn't uh, rip at all. It's more of a plastic material. I meant to look it up and see what it was made out of, and I forgot to, but it does feel as if it's more of a, a plastic-based uh, item. So what happens is you can make your little stencils. So those stencils wound up being, and let me pull one up here, the shapes for, okay, so this is the shape of the window. Okay, so then I could just trace that on my origami paper, and I had my four windows, and each window wound up being slightly different because of the amount of light in it, but it works, it worked out really beautifully. So some of the background work to this really involved um, doing uh, you know, a variety of prepping besides just the, uh, the drawings that I normally do. And I thought you might like to see the, that's one of the origami papers. These are the upstairs windows. And I based it by how much light I felt was in the uh, image and how much I wanted to bring into the painting. So the up, Upstairs windows have less light, but they still do have some light. And that feature of that really orangish color there really played out in this one. This origami paper was used for the farthest window, because although it's light, it's really not as light or bright as this area right here. And then it starts to get a little bit duller in terms of not having a real strong intensity of light like this. So that's what I used for these, you know, kind of like they're all over the place. And then the area where there was a lot of um, light coming through, I found a scrap piece of this paper right here. And I've used most of it up, but it had this lovely section that was really light. And still it was carrying through on this theme of orange. So that's what I used for where there's strong light here and strong light here and a little bit, I did put a little stronger light over here. I might tone that down, but I'm not really sure yet. And I don't know where I got this paper, but it's this one I really like. So I just felt, I felt bad that it's all gone. I don't have any more, but I guess I just have to find a new favorite there. <laughs> so that was all done on top of blue tissue paper. 
So this is all tissue paper underneath here. And um, I had crinkled the paper up so that I had lots of ridges in it, especially up in the uh, sky area, there's lots of ridges. And um, then I went over it after I, you know, had everything on there. I went over it with uh, indigo um, acrylic ink so that I was then able to really bring up the shapes of the different structures that were in there. You're getting a little bit of glare in the, um, on the, I uh, can see it on my camera, but this is pretty close. It's a little bit darker in real life, but I believe it's probably because the amount of light that's falling on here, just so it looks like we're not standing here in the dark. So the setup for this, a board with gesso, then I put on uh, the tissue paper and uh, to uh, secure the tissue paper to the gesso board, I used a uh, gel medium, clear gel medium. And after the tissue paper was on, that's when I brought in my origami pieces that were cut from a, a template so that there's multiple layers on that. Now, in order to make it suitable for a pastel, I had to give it a little bit more texture. And I did experiment with previous practice ones and a couple of paintings that you don't necessarily always need um, a lot of layers of the pumice ground, if any, because there's already texture, especially if you really got a lot of texture in that tissue paper. So, uh, but I knew the amount of expanse I had on the here, I really was gonna need um, some of the pumice gel. So this is what I have. I do not use it out of the jar. I take and I mix it with a little bit of water, probably to, and I think we've had this discussion in class, I think it's about to a pancake, you know, a thicker pancake uh, consistency. So it just kind of like slowly falls off of a spoon. It doesn't drip. So it's not a crepe, it's a pancake, okay? That's what you want to remember with that. Um, so what I need to do now, uh, and this just actually took quite a while, because, um, yes, question. I, I'm just, it's Marge. I'm just curious how big that is. This is 12 it's, by 16. Great. Yeah. Okay. So this is the largest one I've done. I, the, yeah. Most of my practice ones were nine by 12s. I think I might've had an eight by 10 in there. And then I, you know, just the fooling around ones didn't really count, you know, cause I wasn't really making anything out of them. I was just, you know, figuring out how the materials worked. I like it so far. Yeah, well, this is always the trick. I like it so far, too. <laughs> so, like anything, this is supposed to be mixed media. So it's uh, restraining myself from actually not going too far with too much pastel. Let some of the tissue paper do the work. Let some of the origami do the work. You know, I've got a nice base. Everything's based on values here. You know, similar to the sketch. Let me move this so I can see my sketch better. Uh, similar to the sketch in terms of I know where my lights, middles, and darks are. And by using these origami pieces of paper, it really makes those um, sections of the building really jump out. Can you show us the sketch again, Betsy? Because I thought yeah. that was fabulous. Yeah. And you know, it's in my book, uh, so it's not ripped out, so I can't put it up. So that was the sketch. That, that's okay. Great. And that's, you know, the gray toned paper with the uh, white and the black uh, China markers in there. So, and I love the lady sitting down here. I have this here. I did a, a talk about this, getting this started yesterday. And um, I'm not really sure what to do with this lamp post that's right here. Uh, I know I'm gonna move it, but truthfully, that lamp post is gonna go in at the end so that I, uh, that I know uh, compositionally where's a good spot because I don't want it plunked in the middle. I don't want it chopping up or creating a tangent. Mm -hmm. So as I work, what I'm going to do is kind of bear in mind where I think the lamppost is going to go because I know I have to keep it within a certain span just because of the sort of light that's falling on here. This is actually light. This is shadow. Okay, a lot of light falling in here. It's not necessarily all coming from this right here. Some of it is coming 
from this, but there is a little, especially on the sidewalk, which I did not add anything to the sidewalk. I thought of putting origami here and I felt as if, if there needed to be, um, there needed to be a focus of patterns with the origami paper in my mind, okay? And by having a horizontal, large piece of origami paper across the bottom, it took away from, to me, I felt like it took away from this jumping around for these six areas here and these here. And these are all height driven. This one here would be a very horizontal, uh, flat, uh, surface. And to tell you the truth, this is so easy to work with. If I changed my mind, I could easily put origami paper in here, slap on a little bit of my pumice gel, uh, uh, yeah, my pumice gel, and then let it dry and come back in. I just don't think it needed it. I, I think where it's where it stood was fine. It keeps the, the, the design is in the structure, not in uh, just where it's light because everything falls in the structures and back here these are structures those are buildings and that's a palm tree betsy this um, is charleston south carolina <laughs> yes oh, so the house the blue in the on the house looks lighter than the background blue yeah, you know I mean? yeah. did yeah. you do have you put pastel on that yet blue? no there's no pastel on this at all i wonder why it looks like that well because this is lighter than that because I put acrylic ink on top of this. So what I did is um, oh. uh, when I sent out my newsletter, I did take progression shots. I'll put the progression shots in. So the first thing you saw with this is just all blue tissue paper. That's it. Everything, the whole surface was covered with blue tissue paper. Okay. Then I went in and double layered the blue tissue paper. And of course it's transparent-ish. So what would happen if I put two layers of blue on top of one another, it got a little darker. So that's right. what up on top. And then, you know, various things. They added the origami paper. And then I went in with the um, indigo blue acrylic ink. And that's where I fine-tuned edges. I added shadows. I kind of just got a little bit more. I guess you could say that was like the drawing phase for me was getting in there. Because I was not being like mm. overly... Um, uh, I wasn't treating these patterns and pieces of origami as if they had to be exact. I mean, this one I wound up having, you know, this one's like a, a little off kilter. It's no big deal. When I add the pastel, mm -hmm. I'll add colors that'll uh, realign itself. So, so yes, you it, actually it, have the acrylic all over the entire page or just no, on I the did back? No, nope, didn't put acrylic over the whole page. This is just regular tissue paper with no okay. acrylic ink. I get it. All tissue right. Tissue paper with acrylic ink. And some of it has like, that's got one layer of acrylic ink and that's got another layer. So and then I layered the, or I should say washed it. I used a fan brush. It's in the other room drying. I used a fan brush if I wanted to give it more of a, a textural brush feel but also if i didn't want it to be a solid indigo blue if i wanted to let some of the that's a beautiful blue isn't it i love it <laughs> some of that blue <laughs> tissue paper show through so that's what i did and that's why these look a little different i used the fan brush and i brought the blue indigo to just uh, go give the shutters that were up here and over here a little bit of a slighter uh, uh difference so I treated, the bottom line of all this is this design actually acts as a no tan. It's a very strong um, contrast between the dark areas and the light areas. And as I work through it, what's going to happen is, is some of the darker areas are going to start to shift to a middle dark or a medium, dark, uh, you know, a mid middle uh, value. Some of the lights are going to wind up turning lighter and some of them are going to stay about the same. So the values are going to start to shift within this, but that is my key so that I know that I have um, the light. So what I was going to do, the next step of this is I have to pick out colors that are going to go in here. So the, I mean, that's, it's a great building. So, um, you know, we could assign a, a color to that gray. I don't use gray that's made of blacks and whites. And I wouldn't actually truthfully even use a gray that was made of color at the very beginning. I'm gonna start with some colors. 
I'm going to start with my darkest area, which is really going to be the sky. But then I do have some dark areas in here, which really, um, are in, just uh, everyone check your um, your volume just to make sure that you're muted, okay? Because so we can hear some noise coming through. So I'm going to, this here, this I thought was a good representation of this. Because I wasn't going to put all those tissue papers up here. I, truthfully, I wasn't going to waste them. So I thought this value here is a little uh, lighter than maybe these areas, but it does reflect well on some of these others. So anytime you test a color, get a value paper that's close to what you're doing. So if I have this, this is a pretty dark, okay, I can see over here. Yeah, that's, a, that's a pretty nice blue. It's a pretty um muted blue although it's dark it doesn't have a lot of chroma or intensity to it so that may be, work out very nice let's try another one this one here looks as though it's got more color don't go by the stick in your hand you got to put it on paper oh wow look at can you see how light that is do i need to come in a little bit i can zoom in a little bit how about that let me just zoom in you guys have Okay, let me go like that. Okay, so look at this looks as though it's gonna be dark. Look at how dark it is up here on the light. This is the same color right there. Okay, so this, 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 this color is going to look really not quite as dark as I want it to be on my dark color right here. This one's looking a little bit on the uh, a uh, greenish blue uh, vein values are right, but it is a little bit more uh, bluish green than I wanted it to be, but you know, it'll do. So I'm just gonna put like a little bit, yeah, look at that, look at how light that looks. So that may work out really nice in one of these areas down here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna assign this to a middle value. It's gonna go on my tray right here. I have darks, middles and lights that I'm going to set up. And this is a great way of just um, setting up your, I'm just going to try to stay away from the red, uh, the reds, but here's one that I think has a little bit more intensity where I want to have a little bit more pop. That one does. It's got a little bit more pop of color. Let's see what it looks like up here. That's pretty dark. So I'm just going to put that in the dark area. Let's try some more here. Oh, jeez. Another one way too light. Look how dark it looks there. Okay, I'm going to put him in the middle. This one looks a little red violet. Hmm. Ooh. Okay, I'm not sure this is fitting in with the theme. At the moment, I've got these contrasts of blues and oranges, but thinking of that blues and oranges, and let me show you this right here in here. Um, the analogous color wheel, it's the one that I do. Here's blue and orange, okay. Your discords, which are your uh, colors on either side, almost as if you were thinking of a split complementary, complementary colors and the colors that are on either side. It is a bluish violet that's, you know, teetering on being more violet and it does have a, a bluish green right here. So those colors will all go together as a palette so let's keep going. I'm going to keep that there now. Oh, wow. Look at how nice and dark. Who would have thought? Look at how that one's, that one's almost, almost dark. Oh, yeah. Look at that. That's perfect. Okay. Of course, it's the smallest piece of pastel that I have here, but that's a really nice dark. I just want something that's just going to pick up a little bit because I really want that paper to show through. There's a roof line right here because I made sure that this was very crinkly up at the top because I really wanted that sky to have a crinkly, a uh, real crinkly appearance. And I can, I can remember pastels, we work uh, dark to light. I can firm up the edges here. So, you know, if these edges aren't uh, perfect right now, no big deal. I can, um, Betsy, yeah, we we can't see the very top of the page when you zoomed in. It, okay, let me. I thought it wouldn't matter, but since you're working up there, <laughs> yeah, yeah that will matter, won't it? Okay, that's that's good. 
Okay. Let well, it's a little that. tilted, but. Yeah, this guy's a little finicky. Oh. Sorry, sorry to complain so no, much. No, no, no. <laughs> Thank you for saying something. Because truthfully, you know what? I'm not going to probably get down to this end. I'm going to really focus yeah. on the darks up here. So it's more important the top shows up. No, Great. I did not know. Thank you. It. Yeah. Thanks for saying something. I appreciate that. Got lots of darks over here. This dark is going to be, this is like perfect. This is my perfect color. I love this for the background. Just getting in a few. So I'm just... Just really light drags, very dark back in here. And this is where with this origami paper, I, I'm i not stopping at that origami shape. All I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna bring that in. And what happens is, is it softens that edge. So now that edge where, oh, you, oh you're good. You can really see the um, texture in there. So the edge that I cut out is like somewhat disappearing because I'm doing a light drag, bringing that in. This one's a little bit more obvious, so I'm just gonna put more a little bit behind it. Bring this in, it gets really dark back in there. So I'm just gonna a couple of nice sweeps. And again, not putting too much in this area here. We'll get this a little darker. I don't know if I really want it in here. I'm gonna put just a couple of little marks because I don't know if I really want my inside to be the same color as my outside, as even though this has more of a design quality than I'm trying to uh, realistically represent something, I don't want it to feel as if it's a whole. So if I use this same color here and here, it may feel like that. So I'll just put a little touch in there as like a little reminder if I need it. So I'm looking for, um, you know what I'm going to do? I'm gonna put like a little circle around that one right there. And that's that little guy here. I have to find out what that one was. Really want something that's, that's too light. That's gonna to have to go in the middle. Wow, look at, look at how light that is. Doesn't feel that. That's a nice middle gray, definitely. I don't think I have another color that's as dark as what I wanted here. Because this one here, what I was looking for, I did pick this out, but I'm afraid it's going to, yeah, it's feeling a little too red. You can see that there. I was really wanted something up in here that would be a different color than the sky. So what I'm going to do, and there's a window in there. I'm going to give the impression of a window later. I'm just going to get a little in here, let that blue show through. And I can go over that. Yeah. I'm going to take that. I'm going to go over that with this same blue. So now I'm layering it. So what's happening, it is going to look slightly different because the red is underneath it. Well, that's really a very deep red violet. And then the blue is on top. We'll put just a little bit more right here. I don't worry about finessing edges and getting all the details in. The, the, that um, window that's up in there, I really want that to fade away. So by taking and drawing it in now, it's not going to fade away. It's going to just become obvious. Okay, this area here, I'm going to try a little of that reddish right in here. That's that one rooftop. So you can see what's happening as I drag. Tried to make sure there was the right kind of lights on here. So there is uh, another rooftop here. Right. I am going to zoom in because I want you to see what's happening as I apply this. Okay, sometimes when I zoom in, it gets a little funky and, okay, can you see what's happening? The way that that texture that you can see, uh, imagine I crinkled um, tissue paper because that is exactly what I did. Okay, so that texture that you're seeing there is the tissue paper. So I'm trying to keep some of that crackly feeling in the painting. Betsy, um, what is it like um, 
running the pastel over that paper? Is it does it snag? Uh, I wouldn't say it snags, but what happens it what happens is as you do that. Oh, you know what? Hang on a second. Let me just go get. I've got a little practice one over here. Let me just pull this out. And I'll just show you what happens. Okay. This one's hilarious. Okay. <laughs> I say hilarious because I got totally carried away with myself. But anyway, okay. This is all tissue paper with, um, I tried ripping, I was cutting a tissue paper and origami paper. I was not making anything in particular. I think I had the idea of a, of a cityscape when I was doing it, but I really kind of veered away from it. All different types of that's like a mulberry paper. I don't know. I just was like putting it all on. But then I unfortunately put on the uh, pumice that is um, like popcorn ceiling. So then I had to sand everything. So I'm gonna show you what happens. It's a similar thing. It's just gonna be a different sort of texture. When you drag, okay, I'm not pressing, I'm not pushing hard, I'm just dragging. The pastel is just hitting the top marks of the edge. So the same thing is happening there as I drag, okay, let's see if it'll show up on this. As I drag over it, it's only picking up the top layer, which is why you can see the surfaces that are underneath, because the texture that's on top of pastel doesn't go into the gorges the way, um, the divots, I should say, the way paint that's fluid will, it just catches everything that's on top okay like gravestone rubbing okay so that's what's happening with this which is why i can easily we'll, we'll see if this turns into something sometime um so well, that's why we'll um you know my goal really is to whoops keep as much of the papers that are underneath it visible and I do like this little bit of a warmth with this guy right here and I can always tone it down I that looks really good if I'm going to put it here another place that would look good is right down here on the road and there is a little difference here this area here has a little warmer feeling than the area that's behind it I think what I'll do is I'll put a little of that. If I've got some there, maybe I'll just bring a little bit up. This is going to be a little bit more abstract on the side. That's looking very pretty, looking very, very nice. You get this lovely combination of this deep red violet. That's a, a pretty muted intensity, uh, you know, against that that dark, and it almost feels as though it could be. Oh, that almost feels as though it could be some sort of tree or you know uh, I mean this is a winter time as such so I'm going to bring a little bit of that up in there too Betsy Just, yeah can I ask you a question about the pumice gel yes um, absolutely yeah because uh, I was just quickly looking because I I never used it and I didn't know what it was um is it it comes in fine and medium and coarse what did you use you want to use fine. Fine. Yeah. Fine. Um, uh, I mean, I prefer the fine. Um, the the one that I have here, I don't know if it says, yeah, it does. It says fine on it. Okay. Uh, the one that is coarse, I am not kidding you. It is like popcorn ceiling. That's that one there. I, I mean, it, it would just eat up a pastel stick. It's, you know, mm -hmm. if you imagine putting that on a popcorn ceiling. So, yeah, you want to, you want to get the fine. I'm over here looking at my pastel box. Because I'm looking for, uh, you know, a, a dark, something that's got a little bit of color that's dark. See, this is it. When you start working on dark, and what happens is the colors just don't look dark. They look dark on a light surface. They don't look dark on a dark surface. Okay, this one does. Again, what is it with all these tiny little guys? Uh, I'm going to use him on this roof right here. And there's another piece of the roof right there. 
all these little sections that are going to uh, separate roof edges and all that jazz. So let me put a little over here to get these little corners because what happens is as you continue to layer, your lighter areas start to show up right along there. This is also casting a shadow upwards. Just keep going ahead with that. And then I think I'm gonna use this guy down here for the edge. Oh yeah, I went, oh no, it's in the screen. That's good, I said I wasn't gonna go down here, but I like this one for the edge where the sidewalk uh, meets the actual road. Just put a couple little marks in a few little places. Okay, shadows underneath here. Let's stick with this little bit of violet. There's a um, little greenery that's here. So this will look nice with these. There's no greenery up here. But there are, we've got some dark areas where there's, this is a restaurant actually. So um, I'll put a couple of little marks in some spots. Design-wise, this looks a little bit off to me. I'm not really sure what it is. I measured this multiple times, but I think what it is, I'm going to go back to this. I think this angle, this is how you can fix things with this. This is what I cut. That's the edge. That's the line right there. I think that what it is, is it needs to be over here. And I see I put a line here. So I am, wait, that's that. I'm just going to bring that in a little bit more. I can cover that totally up. The only thing I'm dealing with is that, um, I think I like that a little bit tighter there. All these light areas, those will come on later. I'm not thinking even thinking of the light. Right now, I'm gonna bring a little bit of this dark down in here. And again, I'm back to that original color I had back here. And I'm gonna have to try to find something. Look at this, there's this really nice shadow that falls right on that edge. I'm gonna have this like somewhat disappear. So I'm gonna go up, whoops. This stuff comes off pretty easy. Well, this stuff, I shouldn't say this stuff. The pastel comes off pretty easy. You can just wipe it off. Just bring it and let that drop because it's dark here. And the whole idea of these guys here, and this is what I thought I'd show you here, is I'm just going to do a little bit with the window frame. And what I picked out for the window frame, uh, the window, uh, the window um, shutters. Look at how light. Okay, again, a little too light. So let's try this guy. I want something a little light, but He's, uh, he's really light too. What do you want to do? Is you want to just keep checking? Ah, that guy's wouldn't have even picked thought of him. Okay, he's lighter than that guy there. Perfect. Not a lot of color to him. I'm just going to come in. I'm going to give like a little bit of drag, slight drag over the shutters. I don't want to get rid of the design that's there. And a little bit on this side too. So I can still see the shutter. See that light that's showing through, you know, from the little blue origami paper. It doesn't make the value sense. So I'm just gonna, and it must be a, like a little textural divot there because I had to work a little bit harder to get. Now I'm gonna go in with one of these lighter guys. So let's test it. I have that, which you can hardly see. And I like this violet. Ooh, that's pretty light. Well, let's see what happens. I'm gonna start from the bottom and work up. Just gonna drag this up. Keep in the... Okay, yeah, you can see that. And again, I, I like I said, I'm not gonna paint these each right now to its total completion. I'm just making sure that I've got colors that are falling in the value that I want, and then I'll keep them. 
Let me just get this. There's like a, this is one of the things is because I'm not working on a flat surface because I've got crinkly um, paper underneath it. I'm just going to come in a little bit. Can't totally get a flat feeling. So let's do one more, pull that in. I'm going to leave that like that. So you can see what's happening. See the way it's starting to create a little bit, getting rid of a little bit of that origami paper, but it's still there. I'm not covering it totally up. This came up too high, so I can pull this and I'm going to go. Oh, so if you're unsure with pastel, when you're making something, make it making it too dark, and then having kick it down to a little lighter one is better than the other way around. Because once you go too um, once you go too light, it's really hard to avoid getting a muddy feeling. So that gives me a little bit of that look underneath, which that works out fine. I'll just leave that alone now. And there's really not much shadows coming in here. But I do want to get rid of the little bit of that outline that I made with the, I think I can get away with a, a lighter color here. Let's try this one. Oh, okay, there we go. This is a little bit better. I want to get rid of the little bit of an outline that happened when I painted around the uh, shutters. I'm going to bring this up a little bit, okay, and see what's happening so that Oh yeah. Yep. Okay. So what's happening in my head, I'm trying to create a gradual transition of dark to light. Now, in order for it to actually feel like that, this origami paper that's in the center really needs to have something happen to it. So that is really that that's that lovely orangey color that's falling from the inside of the building. So let's just stick on one little area. That looks a little bit too red and a little bit too uh, intense. I want something that's a little bit, so a little bit, a little more muted. It's got color to it, but that looks a little bit too brownish. Not, I'm not opposed to brown, but I'm not looking for brown. So let's try this. Okay. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just very lightly very lightly drag that over my origami paper, making sure that the design stays through, stays visible. And this one here is about the same. What did I do this dark thing here for? Oh, that was a person. That's right. I'm thinking, what's that? Okay. So I'm coming through. So now I'm going to introduce something that's a little bit more of a ochre. Let me uh, just when I crack this guy, I don't want to have the whole stick. I want to use the side of it. So let me get a piece of this stick. Yes, okay. Because it's got a lot of bright color behind it. So I don't need to actually come in with a super bright color. What I need to do is just, wow, that original orange is looking a little bit too orangey. I can just drag this um, ochre over the top of it. It does go a little bit darker down on the bottom. So let's see what we have here. This looks like a Nope, don't like that. When I say I don't like a color, it's just what it is, is I'm trying to think of the combinations that I've used. And just gonna very lightly. So I am real, I'm doing this so lightly, it's like this. Okay, super, super, super lightly. This is a nice neutral. Got a little bit of a, and that'll work out nice because I'll be able to leave the, there's that person that's in the window. And then I'm going to come back with this right bit and just plunk that right a little bit more right in here. Again, being careful not to 
go over it. It looks a little intense on the screen when I turn around and look at it. So that may need to be knocked down a bit. And I can see that my, um, my shutters really need to be a little bit lighter on either side. I'm just, I'm just going to focus on the shutters. Those will be the, uh, oh, this one may work. Um, going to be able to see them come up quicker than if I work. Typically, I work around a whole painting first. Most of you know that. But I want you to be able to see what happens with this slow layering. Okay, so I want to be able to see a bit of that shape of the shutter. So I have to change the value slightly. I had the value a little bit too dark. Okay, so that's coming along. Okay, and then I'm going to go back to the lighter one, and it's lighter on the bottom. So again, I can just trim up those edges. So I've really broken up the feeling of total origami. You can still see it. I'm going to hopefully it doesn't blur out too much. This uh, camera has done me well for the last couple of years, but it may be time to, so you can see it's, I don't know if you actually can see it, but um, you can, the origami paper is obvious. It's, it's under there, but it is broken up by the pastel that I put on top. And I've been able to relegate some of the areas that were too light to, Look over here, look at that little edge on edges here. A little bit of light there is fine. A little bit of light here. Okay, and this is when I can also come in and I can say, okay, great, but you know what? This, this area here starts getting pretty light. So I'm coming in with this one now. That's even a little lighter. And this has got like a little bit of a slightly bluish tinge, which is, got a, of course, bluish tinge, bluish greenish tinge, which of course is going to make sense because I really like the way that shadow is showing up. It's got a little bit more of a warmth in it. Let's bring this down in here and see how it too much of it because it is and this is where I have to look at the paper and quite make it over to the corner pick that up okay and that's light this has got to stay warm so I want to bring in a really warm color and I chose to kind of have my blue shift to a blue green. So let's let's see if this blue green works. And blue and orange are compatible. So it's compatible with the colors that are underneath. This guy's a little darker, so I don't want to come all the way around. And I know I, I got the shape of my shadow wrong, so I'm just going to come in here. Hopefully, I'm not going to block the screen. I'm gonna, this guy needs to come down. So even though there's no origami paper there, I can come in. And there's light that's right falling right over on this side. And there's light that's falling on that side right there. It really comes in on a very odd angle. This guy's really light too. And this is a lighter origami paper. So, and I drew, I did draw in that, I should say painted. I painted in the, uh, the lamp receptacle that's there. So the, I'm just gonna drag this down over it. I don't wanna go that way with that. And then this area here is, um, what have I done? Ooh. Oh, I see what I did. This, there's the window box. That should come out a little farther. 
And that's not really the right color. So I'm going to bring that over. And there's a little bit of light right here. And I'm making this light up a bit right there. So it's all a really slow process. But what's happening, hopefully you can see the way the... Actually, with this light color, it probably is easier to see the way the light... Um, the way it drags across. Okay, and then you get that real. Okay, for a minute, I'm having a little trouble talking and doing this. I'm really concentrating on that. Okay, I got that a little bit too. Oh, uh, yeah, that's, I, I really do like the way this color is looking. I've got light over here too, so I'm going to bring the light in here and have that. It dissipates a little bit off, so it's not a hard edge. So I was able to soften that edge right there. And then there's light that's underneath. I did make this part a little bit uh, thinner. So um, uh, in design wise, this here, I have it so the women are not, it looks like they were just underneath this line and it kind of compositionally drove me crazy. So I did uh, actually shift the bottom of the building. So, you know, any, any tangent that, that was going to be created by the women sitting here, let me just go like this. Whoops. So any tangent that was gonna be created by the women's heads almost sitting on that line I've, I've dropped this and made it a little bit narrower. So height wise, they are above that line and actually it created more of a contrast. You know, I noticed that in the sketch as much as I liked it, it I didn't like the line over the women's heads. So um, don't get, don't get uh, so, so wrapped up with your painting that your photograph that you make decisions based on the photograph and not on good um, design. Okay, this is pretty light here, so I'm gonna see what this. Okay, so I'm kind of taking a chance here because anything that is the blue is really supposed to have a dark color on it. What I'm trying to do is bring in other colors and very lightly drag them over so that they don't get as light as if I colored them in um, because the blue is still showing through. And I think that. Let's see how we can drag a little bit of that on there. And you know, purple and green and orange, those are three secondary colors. They they go together well. So that'll shows a little bit more light there. And then this side over here. And then that'll go nicely right here too. Any other questions anyone has? And this is like a real slow, thoughtful <laughs> way of painting. You know, you have to, you know, since I brought a little violet there, the violet works well right next to where I had that light green. So I'm just gonna slowly drag that up there and slowly drag it up there. So there's some continuity between that. And see that, uh, this is what I'm, uh, looking forward to seeing how this works out because there's the shutter there's the shadow from the shutter and there's the wall and I feel like painting in that's that's acrylic ink I painted that in to give an edge and a shadow and that that is what I was hoping was going to happen that when I actually painted there that the shadow that I painted with the acrylic ink is actually going to do the work okay let's see Okay, I've got the screen. Okay, that's a nice bridge color. I had the violet. Kathy, have you decided anything about the lamp post? No, not yet. <laughs> okay, because I'm wondering, because it, it adds so much light to that, you know, bottom window on the on the right that it would have to be around there somewhere, right? Well, the uh, the actually the light for this window, mm -hmm. the, the this and this, this is all this is all coming from this lamp right here. Okay. Okay, the light in the window is coming from inside. Okay. 
Okay, so um, this light here, and I have another photograph that I took farther away. That's what's creating a lot of this light right here. Alrighty. That's um, doing. Yep. So that's where I've got to figure out, which is another reason why I left that. So I, I, I just don't know how, um, you know. I just, it, it, like, it, it looks it, amazing so far. That's what I think. So good. <laughs> well, you know what? Truthfully, probably if someone was my student, I would have told them to figure it out first rather than just plotting right in like I'm doing. <laughs> but, you know, you know how that goes. Yeah, because your students don't have your te your technique and your experience, and so I'm, I'm one of your students, and I couldn't do this. So just saying, <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing to me. It's, it is really. It's a lot of fun. It's very. If you're someone who are is persnickety about uh, lines and edges, uh, it's going to be very challenging because. You're not painting on a flat surface. You're painting on a very textural surface. And, um, you know, just as these, these close-ups that are what's happening in here, this I feel is drawing a little bit too much away from the window. So I'm going to have to work on that. Too much of the orange is coming through. I saw that as light. I'm looking at it now. I probably should have chosen a different um, color for the origami paper. But the way I can rep, uh, recover from that is just getting rid of, you know, a little bit more of the orange that's down in this part of the building. And where's that lovely violet? And having that fade with the little bit of the violet and that little bit of the violet can go over there too. Let me just put more of that. This is actually going to be darker down here, so I can get a darker color besides that. Let me just pull this in. And I mean, truthfully, the reality of it is, is if I was really unhappy with this section here, which is feeling very, very light for me, this is what I could do. It is feeling very light. What was I thinking when I put that there? I could just come in, I can wipe this all off. Okay. Look at that dust. This is why you work straight up, you let the dust fall, and then you never blow on it, and have a air purifier, because once you start, once you start brushing pastel, even that looks really pretty. It's not pretty for that section of the building because it's way too light. <laughs> but that looks really nice. I like that. Let's see if this will work. Okay, I'm going to come over with the, the violet. Yeah, I don't think it's going to work. Okay. Oh, I gave it a shot. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, and then I'm going to just kind of, because it's just not all. So in the texture is picking up on this. Well, here's something else that I forgot that's really handy to know. You know how usually you can't put dark over light with pastel? Because what's happening is you are painting and the edges of the texture are picking up the pastel that you can put dark over light because it only goes on the sections where you, you are... Um, so for instance, I'm doing this, so what's happening, it's not going over the whole thing. It's only going on the the raised part it's not going on the lower part it's going on the raised part so i all the origami paper is still there but it's muted because i rubbed it in with my brush and also i put a little bit of violet in there so and if i want it to cover up a little bit more i can just press a little harder and it'll go in there or you can you can smudge it in do a little bit of blending might have to work on that and you know what if i really don't like it I do that again, and I come in with my acrylic ink. I paint that with acrylic ink, and then I go over it. Okay, so that that's that's doable, but I am not going to get rid of it now because clearly at some point in my mind, I thought that that was going to work, and um, if it doesn't work, I can still fix it, and I've got a couple of different options. So we'll see. It's starting to look a little bit crazy. So we're gonna leave that alone. The, the two women figures are here. 
Now, one of the things I was thinking about with the, the poll, and this is one reason why I didn't do anything, is the poll could line up with this right here. And I could just have the poll that's in front so that this could almost seem as if it's casting the light here. It's still casting the shadows here, the strongest shadows right here. That's the one that I have to be aware of. And that one is really coming from this lamp right here. So I could move it over and I could put the pole. I kind of already put in a little mark possibly, and I could have it here. It's biggest issue. What is the biggest issue with this? I don't think I've mentioned it. What's the biggest problem with that guy right there? Compositionally in the photograph. Well, it's right in the center. It is. It's right in the <laughs> center. <laughs> you know, and when I sketched it, I kind of shifted it a little bit. Where did I shift it in the sketch? In the sketch, I shifted it a little bit. Oh, yeah. I shifted it a little bit over so that the lamp was right where the, it goes right in front of where the shutter is. But then it's so close to that little lamp there. I thought, oh boy, that's going to be a, that's talk about another tangent, you know, two objects that are doing the exact same thing right next to one another, uh, recipe for disaster. So that was my last thought was that maybe if I just had the lamp here and the lamp post came down here, it's still going to be casting shadow for this area. It's not going to really interfere with where the rest of the lights are because it's this could be casting. I'm not certainly not going to have it a, a ball of white light that's there. So um, let me send this back a little bit. And one more, there we go, that's it. So that's it, so the change from, let me turn this off. I had that on, there we go. So it's starting to take shape. And what happens is, is looking at it, you know, it's a really good idea. I'm going to just kind of straighten this up a little bit because we want to look at it that, okay, when you look at objects in the mirror and for what hap is happening for me here is the laptop for me is showing a mirror image, which is very handy because I can say, okay, how are these different things going? I can see, okay, this is this is uh, obviously a, a larger window. I'm not really sure how that happened since I used a template for both of them, but that one I'd have to rectify. This edge right here feels like it's coming in a little bit. So, um, but yeah, but I like the way that's 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 showing up. That feels very lit there. The windows down here. That oops. This one here that I was trying to fix isn't looking uh, isn't looking as bad on the screen. So I am definitely going to just leave it for a little bit. So bottom line is these are really fun to do. Uh, put your um, put your realism away. <laughs> Have fun with the texture. Um, you know they're they're good for all different things. I've liked them the best with the night scenes, and I think. That is because of this sort of mysterious sort of texture and the lights coming in and out, the darks coming in and out uh, and using the paper. But there's something about that that I find really intriguing. Um, you don't want the origami paper to, well, I shouldn't say you don't want. I don't want the origami paper to stand alone. I want it to be an, a, as if it's the underpainting. So I want it to be there, but I want to soften it like I did up in here by coming in with some other colors. And I'll do the same thing down here. The color of these shutters I'm, I'm pretty pleased with. I feel as if there should be a little bit of a blue in there, but um, I'm not going to do that right now. I will do more of the painting before I do that. So I've wound up with my uh, compl complementary uh, colors, my blue and my orange, where's my base. Okay, and then I from there I moved on to a split complementary. So split complementary, we have my blue and my orange, and on the analogous color wheel, I have my violets and my blue greens. And my violets, I chose to go both a little red, reddish. I pushed the bullet on the split complementary by using a little bit of the reddish as opposed to blue violet. But I really did want to uh, keep with the warmth. 
and that blue that light bluish green to me is really capturing the warmth in there so i do like that a lot um these to me are still standing out as way too strong it almost feels as if uh there's uh too much of a intensity of color that almost makes it feel like the the rooms you know like overly lit and i don't want those windows to stand out that much so i am going to come up with a color that i can lightly drag over it that is again a muted um probably still a muted somewhere in that uh orange line but i could introduce a green a green could work nice too so i'll play around with that and these these worked out these worked out okay oh. um the way that's set up so when i choose the colors this is a little bit darker than that so that'll work out fine okay so hopefully i had fun watching that you know it was something a little bit different and certainly happy to answer any um other questions you have, oops, wrong direction. Sorry, I meant to go the other way. That's so textured. I, I, I would love to see that when you finished it, you know. It's very, it is, it is very textured, you know, and that's uh, why- uh, A lot going on. Mm. Yeah. So that's why what happens with the texture, what I'm um, trying to do is, so the texture is part of it and the texture is intriguing, but the texture does not, detract from the, uh, the one the composition because texture could do that and uh, to the design pattern so I, I want everything to play together um, you know so the texture is there but it's not uh, not in your face it's more subtle mm -hmm. and you can't kind of get away from it but in a part of that is close values okay oh. I've used very close values up there all that testing over here made a difference in terms of mm -hmm. I didn't pick a color that was too many value steps away from the color that was there so that I didn't create a contrast. It was more like a subtle blend. It's the same with here. You know, it's a subtle blend. It slowly gets darker as it goes mm -hmm. up so that you can see the texture, but then um because of the way you've added the colors, you know, it just kind of starts to work together itself. But oh, okay, so <laughs> so finger, so fingers crossed. I think I did very good job going slowly and not putting too much pastel on them. And that is the trick with uh use well for me, that is the trick for uh these to be successful is not putting so much pastel on that you cover up what you want to show through from that very textural tissue paper and then from the designs that are on the origami paper. Uh, so it's just, like I said, just if you're going to want to try it, seriously, I don't know how many, I just goofed around with putting down paper, putting pastel on top of what happens if I put one coat of pumice. I found two coat was better for me, but if you're not putting on much pastel, maybe, you know, one coat of pumice is fine. Um, I did discover that um, uh, if I was doing the, the darks and the origami that I really like to have a very high contrast as if the origami paper was the no tan. And when someone said, well, couldn't you do it the other way around? I'm thinking, absolutely. You could have dark origami designs and have light tissue paper. So I really was very um, uh, bound to that idea of starting with a no tan, darks and light tissue paper, origami paper. And that kind of set the stage for all those shapes showing up quickly. So, well, so does anybody think they're gonna give it a try? <laughs> oh, ne next year. Okay, that's uh, it. Next year, like 2025? <laughs> Oh my gosh, maybe, but so tell me again, the, um, the, 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 um, what was it? The, uh, the gesso that that's beneath the tissue. Right? It is because the, um, and I was just prepping boards today. So, um, anytime you use a board, whether it's, I use the, uh, birch board panels and I use gator board. A uh, foam core board can start to buckle with all the weight and the liquids that you're putting on it. So I use the foam core. It's a it's got a sturdier center, more rigid outside shell too. 
So okay. it's less likely to buckle, you know, with the, especially the larger you get. So I put uh, two coats of gesso on the front and one coat of gesso on the back. And then from there, I add my uh, tissue paper. I now have a working surface. I don't have to worry the the both the gator board and the birch bark are treated. This one is this one's gator board. Um, so then now they're both treated, you know, and I've mm -hmm. I've got a, a good solid ground. So then you can just add things on top of that. And then it's the okay. gel medium is what I use to hold the tissue and the origami to the gessoed board. And then when that's done, it's the two coats of uh, uh, fine pumice ground. And I do put the ink down first and then put the ground on top of it. But you certainly could do it the other way around. You know, it's uh, at that point the the you're dealing with liquids at that point, and the in uh, the acrylic ink is a very um, a thin liquid so it does not fill the tooth because that's that's what you're always trying to do is not fill the tooth so the pastel is something to stick to interesting okay okay what a recipe. yeah there you go ah there it is over my shoulder okay <laughs> and well, you know questions? i love it i love <laughs> it and I, and I do it all the time i i just uh and what i i like to do as well as um i don't do what you're doing as well, certainly as you do it. But what I also like is just to take a piece of origami or mulberry paper or what have you, prepare it like a surface and then let it inspire something. Yes. So I haven't gone in with this level of intentionality for the most part, um, as I did with the shells and so forth. Yes, I just was like them say, to inspire me. Yeah. So I, th I just and think it's a lot of fun and great. And that's a, actually a good point, Paula, because by coming in and just, you know, and playing with the papers and getting inspiration for what you want to paint, what do you see in those, uh, you know, tissue paper or origami papers, what designs have you created and come up with something like that. It doesn't have to be, uh, you know, intentional. I mean, I had, but remember, I did a whole load of little goofy practice things where there was nothing intentional exactly. about it at all. So, um, you know, I think it's all a, an evolution of how comfortable you are with the, because it is, do you, do you find it's uh, very different painting on that, those types of surfaces? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So it's like anything, you know, you've never done, you know, a, a certain medium before to jump right in and, you know, uh, start trying to uh, challenge yourself with something that, well, challenging is good. So I'm not saying don't, but, you know, play with the materials first. So we starting to take a ceramics class, first class tonight. And, you know, my guess is they're just going to have them just get used to the materials and how the weight of them, how to manipulate them. You know, what, what can you do with them? You know, as opposed to going in and all of a sudden you're just creating something tonight. Um, so I'll be anxious to see how she makes out. <laughs> mm -hmm. But to think of that when you try something new, that just, just enjoy the process. Betsy, this is Phyllis. I'm not familiar with Jeco. Can you, you just spell that for me? Oh, Gesso. Uh, G-E-S-S-O. And oh. Gesso is, uh, it's a, it's a, a, a white um, liquid, um, I don't want to use the word paint because it's actually not a paint, that is used to prep surfaces okay. so that you can paint on them. They're free. It's free to like you Gesso canvas. Uh, you know, you can uh, gesso any sort of surface. And then what happens is, is the paint affixes to the surface, as opposed to, let's say, if I was doing the birch, uh, the birch boards that I used, if I didn't put down gesso, it is very possible that any liquids, let's say I put down the acrylic inks, they're, they're going to um, soak into the wood. Oh, okay. So it's like a barrier uh, paint, a barrier liquid that goes down. Um, so it makes something uh, non-porous. So guess. you put the gesso okay. on first? Put the gesso first, that's the very first thing. Even yes. before the acrylic ink? Yes, before the okay. acrylic inks. Okay. Yes. And that's, like I said, that's working with the, the gator board and the uh, birch board. Now, there may be people out there that have worked with both of those and they haven't used gesso and it's absolutely fine, but 
you know, uh, you know, first of all, a gator board is such a slick surface that, you know, you, you really are, you're, you, there's no, I mean, it's, it's a slick surface. Um, so I can kind of picture paint just kind of like rolling around on it for some reason. This, so. this painting that you did here of the house, what is the surface that you started with? Is it, is it? Gator board. It's gator board. This is gator board, 12 by 16 gator board. Okay. Yes, that okay. I. Um, I guess I was first on that as well. Yep, yeah. gesso. Two coats of gesso on the front, one coat of gesso on the back. Okay. Now, why do you have it on? Put it on the back of the board. Okay. So what happens is, is it's a, uh, it, uh, uh, it's a count counter effect. So we've just got uh, fire engines or something going down the road. Uh, it counterbalances the liquids and the weights that you're putting on one side. So by putting something on the back side, you know, I mean, it was the way I was taught, like, you know, decades ago, and it's very wow. possible people don't do it anymore. But it, I guess it's just ingrained in me that you always put the gesso on the back too. If it's a really large board, you can put an X across the back of it. Mm -hmm. uh, but it does help from, you know, a uh, gator board's really sturdy stuff. Definitely birch board is too. I've never done anything for either one. Well, this is the largest of this I've done, but I've used plenty of gator board. The, uh, and I've never had it warp uh, when I've put multiple layers. You know, the, that seashell, the underwater series that I did is has a lot, a lot of texture on it, uh, far more than even this. Uh, and uh, it's it's never buckled. So, I see. okay, mm -hmm. that's yeah. the reasoning behind that. That is the reasoning behind that. I mean, there may be a more updated way of doing it, but that's just the way I've. Okay. I've, okay. I've always that's done very it. helpful. Maxie? Yeah. When, when we did this in your class, I did a couple of small things on mat board. Oh, and yes. Yep. You know, it's not as sturdy, but just for fooling around, it worked fine. And I prepped it that same way with. Perfect. Yes. So, and the tissue paper and the everything you just said. Perfect. Perfect. Like, that, yes, that's I forgot about that. Easy, Thanks for mentioning Really that. easy and cheaper than those other surfaces. And you're right. You're you're absolutely right because you know if you've got you know spare pieces of map board around, might as well use them. And you know, and again, it's like anything. The um, you know the smaller sizes, you're probably going to get less of a warp. Did you? Because you yours were smallish, if I remember. What like six by sixes or something? Or am I? Yeah, they they were really small, and I okay. honestly I haven't looked at them since, so okay. I have no idea if they're warped. But <laughs> okay, yeah, you was... readily see if they are because you know. Yeah. It's... It was just experimenting anyway, so. Yeah, 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 it is. It's it's fun just to try something new. You know, I thought since I had, uh, since it is something I want to be working on this year and perfecting a little bit more, and I've done a demo for a group yesterday just showing how I got started. So it seemed like, well, this is a good way to, you know, start the year. You guys can follow along with, uh, you know, what I was, what I was doing yesterday and today. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, well, thank you, everybody. Yeah. And um, you'll be getting a, you know, notice will be going out before too long. You know, I'm going to have another pop-up for January. Yay. Uh, that'll, yeah, that'll be in, uh, not next week, but it should be the following week. I just had to sort out the date. And uh, so you'll get the information on that. And uh, there's lots of shows happening on the Cape. So um, mm -hmm. my uh, next newsletter, I'll have some of them in there, okay? Oh, great. Oh, and Thanks. if you know anyone Perfect. who's interested in a beginner pastel workshop, I'm doing one in Falm at Falmouth Art Center, uh, ja uh, January, oh, it's a Saturday and Sunday morning, 9.30 till 12.30. And I, I'm sorry to say, I don't have the dates off the top of my head, but it's that Saturday and Sunday in the 20s, like 20 and 21 or something like that. Uh, but that'll be in the newsletter too. That's great. Thanks. Okay. Guys. Okay. Yeah. Well, thanks so much. Happy 2024. I know, really. It'll well, be a I'm very ready. artsy you. year for us. I can thank you very much. It. I can yeah. feel it. Thank you. That's <laughs> great. It gets better. Thanks. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Thanks so much, Betsy. Bye. Bye. Bye.